Well, hello everyone. Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar being brought to you by Centio. Now, I'm very pleased to have Nicholas Carreras, a product manager for Centio, here to uh, deliver today's presentation. So without any further delay, what I am going to do is um, uh, welcome, Nick, and I'm going to make you the presenter. So, um, Nick, if you can share your uh, screen, let's go ahead and get underway here today. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Thank you, Cynthia, and thank you to all of the viewers. We're really, really excited. So, welcome to Sentio. Everybody should see my first page, which is Enhance Your Research Process, a single place for your research ideas, notes, and thesis. And what we're going to focus on today's webinar is how to reduce the time you spend searching for data, hopefully by over 50%, uh, and hopefully save you something like 1,200 hours, as well as making you more efficient and more precise. A quick background about myself. My name is Nicholas Carreras. I'm a product manager at Sentio. Previously, I was director of research at Solor. Prior to that, I worked as an investment analyst at United First Partners. And before that, I spent over six years at J.P. Morgan as an investment banker in the telecom media tech team doing M&A credit and equity. So I've used a lot of the platforms out there and I'm really, really excited. So what we wanted to focus on today was looking at Nike. Uh, we saw there was a, a new advertising campaign that came out in early September uh, with Colin Kaepernick. And we really thought about what kind of impact would that have on Nike and how could Sentio help you? And we're gonna focus today on the idea of the fundamental document search. So looking through all of Nike documents and finding references to Colin Kaepernick, Just Do It, other concepts. Looking at alternative data, which includes Google Trends, Twitter, uh, Instagram, sentiment analysis. And we are really, really excited about some of the sentiment analysis we are running currently on transcripts. But we're also starting to apply that across all varying forms of data types, such as tweets. Uh, news and research. Next up, we'll be kind of quickly going through our financial data and the charts that you could create, a little bit of an Excel plugin in the research management system. Now, I want to take a pause for a second. One of the items we really loved about Nike, we really got into this, we had an article that was published in Forbes about four weeks ago. Um, encourage everyone to look that up. We also put out a series of, I want to say, a thread, which included about 26 tweets going through a lot of our thoughts on Nike. Um, right after the earnings transcripts, which we're really, really excited about. Okay, I'm going to flip my screen now and hop right into my Sentio. And you're going to see I already have a note prepared. I'm going to jump right into the document search. And what I'm going to start thinking about is how can I look at how both Nike or its peers have talked about Colin, Colin Kaepernick, Serena Williams, et cetera, what kind of change is there? So what I can very, very quickly do is I'm going to start off by saying, up, oh, I'm going to type Nike, pull up the ticker, and then I'm going to build a very quick query. And I'm going to say I only want to find references within transcripts. So I'm going to do in colon transcript, and I'm going to build a very quick query, which is going to be something like um, about Colin Kaepernick, and just do it. And you'll see I immediately pull up two transcripts, the most recent one and the prior one from May 2018. I click right into the transcript. And here we go. I have my reference with this idea of just do it, just do it campaign. Here's a very interesting part to this. Um, and you'll see that they don't reference Colin Kaepernick. They only reference Colin. Um, so we would have add to add. And what we can do very quickly is just something like Colin. And we're improving the query as we're working through it. And you'll see that just adding the column, we'll pick that up. Immediately we have that new hit, and it'll also highlight the column. And there we are, perfect. This is exactly the section that matters to me. What I wanna make sure we do is part of this research process is taking good care of your notes and being able to track where you found data. I'm gonna take this exact section, do a quick highlight is what we call exactly as if you're doing your work, you can pick various labels. And I'm gonna pick one that I already have and I'm gonna use in this instance, it's gonna be overview. 
and boom. And you'll see that we've highlighted the section in the text, which is the reference. And what you can see is there was actually a prior mention. If we go right into the May 2018, let's quickly see what they had said. It's something slightly different. Here they're saying we'll end up doing something. It's just not saying that it failed. This is a great example of the search power. We're not doing a control S. We can rearrange the words um, within the query, or we could also make the query more precise. I'm not going to spend much time there. The thought that I would also, the thing I also thought would be interesting is very quickly, if we rebuilt the search, and instead of searching for Colin, I'm going to say Serena, LeBron, uh, Brady, Kobe. These are other famous athletes. How has Nike potentially talked about these athletes um, in the past on transcripts, and how does that compare to maybe what they're saying about Colin? I'm going to quickly just click date, go all time. Yeah, if I can move my control bar, there we go, apply. And what you'll see is we have a significant number of results over at least 15 years. And I can go all the way back and go, I'm just gonna take the first one for fun. Here we have one from March 2003. That feels like not that long time ago. And we can immediately pull open the results and we'll see hopefully um, who has come up. And I actually think this is, Nike was already starting to talk about LeBron and Serena Williams. And here we go, oh, LeBron and Kobe, LeBron and Kobe. So interesting to see Colin Kaepernick might not be as old, but he definitely doesn't have that many references. Now, the other thing I was thinking about is how do other peers tonight, have they been talking about this on their transcripts or also within their research? What I'm going to quickly do, I'm going to click the plus button, jump us right into the equity data terminal. In the equity data terminal, within the financial section, I'm going to quickly be able to find all of the Nike comps. And I'm going to quickly create a watch list based on that. So I'm going to jump right into my financial tab. Within my financial tab, I'm going to jump right into my comparables. And we will immediately have all of Nike's comps. And what's interesting here is what we do is we give you various ways. You could add any ticker you want. You could remove tickers. And we could also say, I want to include maybe some of the international peers. And I've checked this check mark. And you're going to see, up. I've added in Adidas. Uh, PVH is still here. I've added in Puma. What I could also do is I can delete. You know what? I'm not interested in Shaw Group. I'm not interested in Jingyi, um, Yuang. And what I'm also going to do is I can very, also, very easily and quickly add any company. And I can click this plus button, and I can say I also want to add in uh, UAA. I also want to add in and with the UAA joint, and I also want to add in Lulu. So I've got my comps group really quick. I'm going to click in the horizontal bars, save this as a watch list. And so now I have a watch list, which I can call my Nike peer watch list. I can set alerts to this watch list if I want. I'm not going to do that in this instance. I'll call this Nike peers. I'm going to turn off all of my alerts, but I can get a daily alert whenever there's any news around it, press releases, transcripts, up, oh, turn that off, click save. And we're going to see my watch list are going to open up. I can jump right back into my document search. And I'm going to run the exact same query of Colin Kaepernick, just do it. And I'm going to run it across the entire watch list of peers that are the Nike peers. My apologies. My computer's having a little slowdown. We can see I can click into the tickers. I can pick my watch list. I have Nike peers. Click into Nike peers. I'll immediately pull open all of the documents. And we see that we have about 4,000 documents immediately within the first two years. And I can quickly say, oh, I only want to search transcripts. And I'm going to do something around the lines. We're going to say Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Just do it. And there we go. Perfect. And I'm going to click Enter. Oops. I have a little typo, unfortunately. And I'm going to re-click. And we immediately have that night transcript. We have a Decker's transcript, and it comes out fairly early. And this is a great example just how we do, how do we think about going about it. And what I could even do is I could say, what I'm going to do is just do it. it has to be, I'm going to set the order very quickly. 
and I'm hopefully going to try and eliminate any false positive. And here we go. So I've only got one reference from Under Armour as opposed to Nike one, and we're just doing it. So this is just using the Nike slogan. But very quickly, we know that none of the peers have talked about Colin Kaepernick or the Just Do It campaign within their transcripts. What we can also do very quickly is we can very quickly run this kind of a search across research analysts. What are the research analysts talking about? Um, and what is the impact? So what I can do is I can remove my little shortcut for transcript, put in research, rerun my query, and I have a significant amount of results immediately. 44 results. It looks like it's primarily Nike, Under Armour. I can click right into the first one. And here we go. We see that there's a survey. So this is actually fantastically interesting. We're going to see that a lot of the brokers have done surveys around what is the impact of Colin Kaepernick, right? Our survey on just doing it resonated strongly with 18 to 34 year old men, assuming this amount, Nike's 30th anniversary, um, right? And here we go. We can go into some of the results. 42% indicated it does not impact their desire to purchase Nike versus Nike product. What I can do is I can make this as a highlight as well. And I can say, uh, you know, I really like the entire section. I'm going to just grab it. And I'm going to call this a different label. I had used overview originally. And I'm going to call this one of my channels called Channel Check. There we go. And as you see, we've put in the whole section. And what we can very clearly do is we can see we can go through a lot of these documents and find what are the research analysts talking about in real regards to my query. I'm not going to spend much more time here, but I want to make sure we keep in mind some of the features that we did. And what I want to make sure I show is I'm going to click into my notebook. Within my notebook, my notebook is where I have all of my stored data. So all of these highlights that I made. I can have them within my notebook. I have access to them immediately. I can share them. I can integrate them into my research process. And I really can do a fun, a very large and fun amount of features with them. My apologies. Oh, let me try my Sentio. And this is my computer. I'm just going to try and refresh here. So my apologies, I'm having a slight technical difficulty. Uh, and what I'll do very quickly, I might just close right out. And jump right back in. But no worries, all of those that I've done has been saved. Right? And so all of those highlights that I made should be right within our notebook. And I'm going to click right into my notebook. And here we go. I've got this survey, and this is the highlight that I made. Oh, I've got Callan, survey on Kaepernick, my name, ticker, and the highlight. So I just want to make sure we have that. And we'll also have the highlight that we made from the earnings call. There it is. I've got a bookmark, and I've got the highlight with the overview. OK. Now, what's really interesting is what we'll find is that a lot of the brokers have really emphasized that there's really an impact in, in North America. A majority of the sales and operating profit of Nike comes from North America. But I'll say I want to check that really quick, and I'm going through very quickly here. I'm going to put in Nike. I'm going to build a query where I can very quickly say I only want to search tables, and I could say revenue North America. We also have all of the segmental and operational data within our equity data terminal. But I really love our table extraction features and the ability to check any of these metrics. So I'm going to click right into here. And you see, I can very quickly see it brings me right into North America. I've got my data. I can click my time series. I'll say, up. Oh, I want to do the most recent columns. I'm actually going to try and do North American EBIT compared to Nike brand. Click Submit. And I'm hopefully going to pull all of the North American operating profit and all of the excluding corporate expenses and branded um, EBIT from North. And there we go. I've got it up very quick. I can click through any of these numbers. You'll see it opens the table, and I can check them. And what you'll see very quickly is all of the Q4s look to me like they're a fiscal year. 
We have a really quick solution to that. I can click table contains fiscal year values. Up, oh, it normalizes them. From here, I can bring this into Excel or I can bring it right into the plotter. And the plotter is our charting feature. And this is the reason I wanted to use the doc search instead of Recipe Data Tool. I can quickly eyeball the data. I don't need to go into Excel and try and look very quickly. So I can see my North American revenues are the dark blue line. My total leg brand is the light blue line. We have two different accesses, which explains slightly different in quantum. But what I could do very quickly is I could say, I'm gonna do a hybrid series, and I'm gonna say A divided by B, or North America divided by total. Click add series, and I'm gonna quickly have the percent of, rev of operating profit from uh, North America. And what I could do, I'm gonna do this very quickly. I can rename this. I'll call this percent EBIT NA. Up. And I can also quickly click into my access, move this onto the left, rename this again, percent EBIT NA. Boom. And I can also drag this right into here and now make that access one access. And so very quickly, and I can even do what I'll do very quickly is I'll say, you know, I want to make this clear. I want to turn this into a dashed line. And there we go. So I can very, very quickly see that North American operating profit as a total percent of operating profit across nights is over 60%. Uh, so definitely want to look at the impact, you know, the capital impact is going to have a huge impact within um, North America. And what I thought we could do from here, given that we're in the plotter, this is where we can really start playing with alternative data. And what I think is fascinating is all of these surveys, which um, you may be hiring people to run or which some of the sell side um, banks are running are over usually like 500, 1,000 people. Um, and in my mind, I think today that, that seems very, very small. Uh, we have Twitter, we have Google. And we could literally run analytics across what the entire consumer population is saying and doing. And I, I always think about it as, you know, there may be a, 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 a TV uh, company that used to do ratings. And that, those ratings were based off a very small sub-percentage of the population, as opposed to, say, in Netflix today, which can actually build its own rating system on its entire viewer base, which is much greater. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start playing around with alternative data. I can click my plus button. I'm going to jump right into another plotter. And what I'm going to do is I want to start playing with Google Trends. So you see I've clicked Add Series. I have my pop-up up here. These are all of the data points that I can chart within Sentio. So I've got alternative data. I've got our Sentio sentiment. I've got operating profit data. I can upload any data. I can also save series as I create and bring them into a chart. In this instance, I'm going to take Google Trends. And given North America is what's so important, I'm only going to take the U.S., and this is great. We can really run the analytics on the geography. I can even go to the state. And I'm going to do a query, and I'm going to do Nike. And you have several options come up. I'm going to run it as a moving average, and I'm going to do it as a year-over-year -year growth. Click Add Series. And we can see the spike in Nike mentions right in September. I'm also going to rerun this exact same chart for Adidas. And there we go. I'm gonna make sure I do it the exact same way, moving average over your growth, add series. And we can see that Adidas trends have come down, Nike trends have been flat with a sudden spike. You know, I might be really interested in trying to expand this. So let's say I go back to uh, 2013. And there we go. So what you could see is Adidas had a significant surge in these little trends through the end of 2015 into 2017 before it fell back off and Nike has now come up. Now this is super interesting, but I'd really like to apply a little bit of, let's say, how can I put an overview of finance? What I can do is I can click the ad series, I can, I'll take the PE, I'm gonna do NKE, I'm gonna do Adidas, I'm gonna take it as an NTM, so I'm taking the NTM PE multiples, I don't want this to the growth, I want the absolute number, and I'm gonna click ad series. So I'm gonna immediately chart both Nike and Adidas NTMP multiple from about end of 2013 through today. Now the chart is a little bit hard to read at first and I can move some accesses over. What I'm going to do to start though is I'm going to click this hybrid series, the thing that we did to figure out the percent of North American profit, and I'm going to do hybrid series 
And what I want to say is I want to take the Nike PE over the Adidas PE. So create a relative multiple. I'm going to do C divided by D, click Add Series. And immediately I'm going to have this new line, which is the relative multiple. And what I can do, I'm going to click the eyeball. I'm going to hide each of the individual multiples. I'm going to turn Adidas a slightly different color because the blues are too similar for me. And so there we go. And I'm also going to turn my hybrid, and I'm going to change the name of it. I'll call this NKE ADS, let's see, ADS relative P. There we go. And I'm also going to change this, and I'm going to say, let's make this red. It's a little bit easier on my eyes. And let's make this a dashed line. There we go. And I'm also going to very quickly move my axes around and say, I'm going to put the P on the left hand side and there we go so what can i see very quickly as the adidas google trend started to spike there was an inversion in the multiple so between late 2013 and middle of 2015 nike treated traded at approximately a 30 to 40 percent premium to adidas on an ntmp google trend started to really pick up in september 2014 and that happened all the way through about, let's say, January of 16. But the Adidas NTM multiple only benefited from that as a slight lag. And as the line comes down, it tells you that now Adidas is trading at a premium to Nike on an NTM PE basis. Now, the really fascinating part is that as the Google trends for Adidas come off a cliff, that inversion of multiple remains constant for an extra 7 to 10 months. And thereafter, the multiples revert to night trading at a premium to Adidas, which means that with this information, you can start thinking maybe this is a good time to be long night short Adidas. And this is just a very quick cursory overview. And what we can see in September, you see the Colin Kaepernick effect. You see that Nike is trading at a historical, it looks like even at a discount relative to Adidas to their traditional multiple. But this is a really quick way to create your own survey. And I want to create another one very quickly. I'm going to open another plotter. And what I'm going to run this on now is actually consumer sentiment or consumers. And I'm going to do Twitter. So I can take Twitter. I can run it by, by a ticker or I can create a query. And the query that I want to create in this instance is going to be a very big, wide query. And I can do night or just do it or night boycott or boycott night or Colin. Kaepernick uh, or Kaepernick. And I'm just going to click Add Series. This is one of my absolute favorite charts. And what it shows you is it's going to show you a significant, significant spike in the number of tweets um, which had this result. And what we're going to be able to see is we're going to narrow down our universe to be, let's say, end of August through end of September, and just see a sheer quantum. Oh, that's good enough. We can work with this. I'm going to change the date. I'm going to say I want to take 2018 uh, 08, and I'll say, how about I just go to 09 September, boom, and we have this massive, massive spike up. I didn't want to do this. I will rerun it quickly. 2018, and I'm going to say August 30th. So I'm going to really narrow down my range here. And what I'm even going to do is I'm going to just click the icon here. And I really think this is easier to see as a bar chart. I'm going to just turn this range to a bar chart, click out. And what we can see is that on the day after the ad campaign released, before the video was released, it was released on September 3rd, the ad campaign, you have about a million tweets or 700,000. On the day after, we had about 3.5, 3.8 million tweets, 2.8, and 1.7 thereafter. So effectively, in about four or five days, we had 10 million tweets. And that is a much broader survey than 1,000 people. What we could do here is we could start having a bit of fun and say, hey, maybe I want to add the share price. So I can just quickly jump to and do add series, add share price. And maybe, you know, maybe I want to just try and hone in on 
So I could see a fall as the camp before the campaign, after campaign, share price increases. And maybe I want to try and get some sentiment within Twitter. And what I could do is I want to leave it. And what I'm going to say is within my query, I'm only going to search for the negative term, Nike boycott or Kite Nike. I'm going to get rid of Kaepernick or Colin Kaepernick. I'm going to click add series. Now you can clearly, it's important to build a good query. Um, and you can skew some results. This is something we played with a lot and we had a lot of fun with it. And the positive was outweighing the negative, even with more complex. I'm going to quickly build this in again as a bar chart. And what we can see in brief is let's say there are 3.8 million tweets around Colin Kaepernick's Nike, just do it. You only had about 300,000, which were about boycott Nike or Nike boycott. And you can see that that really falls off a cliff very quickly. I can very easily save any one of my charts. So I'm going to click this floppy disk, call this my Nike Twitter sentiment. And campaign. You'll see that I have a nice ticker in here. I'm going to click save. Here's the chart. It's immediately going to be a page to my notebook. I can also click in here and I can embed a page HTML or create a short link. The reason I brought that up is I'm going to just jump right into my notebook for a second and I'm going to run a quick search. I'm going to pull up my Nike notes. And what we should have immediately, I'm going to take uh, there is my, so you see the chart that we created, and this is the prior note that I've created. So ahead of this webinar, what I did is I created a note which had kind of an overview. And here are some of the research brokers, what they were saying, and I've labeled it with overview in terms of if they're a price target, what's the perspective. I also have channel checks. So what I could very quickly do is I could even quickly say, ah, you know what? I want to add a highlight in here, and we can add the highlight that we had just made earlier today. And you'll see how it comes up. It's right here. I could open it in the document. I could also just very quickly get the other one that we had made from the transcript. There we go, I'll click close. What I could also very quickly do, and here's where I talk about 10 million tweets since September 3rd. Here's the basic version of the chart that we'd created so I could bring it into my notebook. I have a web link that was that copy link. And I have a couple of other links. I'm going to stay in this note for a second. So this is what we call a Sentio notebook. Think about it as Microsoft Word, Evernote, OneNote, or your email box all in one for a professional enterprise use case. So I've got all of my highlights. I've got all of my charts. I can click into any of the data, check it. Here's a different kind of chart that we ran on the Twitter sentiment, purchase intent mentions. And lastly, what I really wanted to touch upon is we started to apply our actual sentiment algorithm to the tweet. So as opposed to trying to construct the tweet about boycott or purchase, it's actually running a sentiment algorithm. And this is what we have running in our transcripts today. And what we could see in this chart right here is clearly a spike in the number of tweets right around September 3rd and 4th. Sentiment was coming slightly down ahead of the release, and specifically from the moment the ad was announced to when it was released. But as soon as the ad campaign is released, sentiment is rising. And this is super powerful as you start to think about, is the street, which is running a survey on 500 people, getting an accurate reflection of the impact to Nike's operating metrics as a result of the ad campaign? Or are they underestimating or overestimating it? In other words, are the consensus estimates for Nike's next 12 months revenue increasing? as the sentiment is increasing by the same proportion? Or is it not? And if it's not, is there an impact where you can find alpha? I can also do very quickly, we ran kind of the most popular hashtags, a couple of different positive sentiment. Um, this was a, a Google Trends, I think. Um, and we also ran who else has mentioned this? How is it mentioned? And we applied this sentiment, lastly, to a huge variety of news articles. So we're really, really excited to be able to start applying this technology across the different data types. Now, what I also wanted to do very quickly is we've got a bunch of data within my notes. I might also very quickly um, want to pull open, just get a view of trading multiples, you know, in a quick, simple way. I'm going to go into my equity data terminal. Again, I'm just gonna click Nike, and I can click right into my financials or charts, and I'm gonna pick my charts in this instance. 
I'm going to pick my trading multiples. And I can very quickly get my historical forward NCMP multiple for Nike, as well as comparing it to a share price, to the S&P, and to the price. I can easily click here. I can open it in Plotter. I can save it. I can do a short link. I can bring the data into Excel. All of this super, super easy. Now, I want to jump right back into my notebook. So my apologies for hopping. I just wanted to make sure we shared this idea we can do everything in one place. So here's this note that I created. And it seems really long, and I want to make sure I keep track of it. What I can do is I'm going to hit X. I'm going to take everything out. I'm going to create what we call a thesis. And a thesis, the difference between a thesis and a note in Sentio is that a thesis is where you can have your structured data. And we can track structured data and run analytics on structured data. I'm going to jump into the thesis. I'm going to add a ticker. I'm going to hit Nike. Up. I now have the option. I can do a template. So my template one has thesis, key debates, bull bear. You also see you can do a SWOT. You can do a research report. You can do anything you want. In this instance, I'm just going to leave it template one, create thesis. And here we go. We're going to have this area where I can add comments and structured data. So up the owners and the careers, the stage. I can say, this is a pitch. It's not live. My strategy, I think this is maybe growth at reasonable price, event driven. You can pick any one of these. You can also create any column you want. And I'm picked GARP. I have to manually enter what my target price is. So I actually think the upside in Nike could be significant. And let's say I think it's really about 120. With a downside price, I don't think there's much downside. Let's say 70. Recommendation, I'm a buy. My conviction is high. What are the catalysts to this? And I really think it's going to be, nah, you know, we have a lot of options here. And what I'm just going to pick is other or none. I don't think it's a catalyst. It's really the ad campaign, my time horizon, six to 12 months. What do I want my portfolio weight to be? Well, let's go there. I've got my market cap, leverage, revenue. And I can quickly start typing once I'm here, you know, my overview of Nike and all my pieces. So I can start saying, given the release, of the Kaepernick and just do it had campaign Nike presents an interesting investment opportunity. I can start putting together a full thesis here, right? And what I could do is add sections and I want to make sure that I publish it. Here we go. I can start typing a car, new thesis based on ad campaign. Now, as soon as I've done that, I can track all of the ideas that I have in my portfolio so I can click into my dashboard. My dashboard is effectively my portfolio and my entire firm. So and I'll click quickly, watch list, and then the watch list on the bottom plus I can stick my tickers. And this is a quick view of all the companies that I cover, my perspective. And there we go. So you can see I've just added Nike. I'm saying it's a pitch. Here's the last date, October 10th, GARP, upside 120, 70, 77, buy, all the data's here. These are all the companies. I've got liquidity services, fleet number, Chevron, Borg Warner, Platform, uh, Eagle Materials, Lazy Boy Pool, TPX, and I have a couple others. I have a calendar underneath, underneath here, which tells me when I've written notes. You can see I've done a note on October 2nd. I've got an event coming up, and this looks like it's pool earnings date. Any of the notes that I've created, so you can see that the thesis we just created today, the note that we just added to just do it, all of these come up here, and I can see it very quickly. It's a one-stop shop for all of the data of your portfolio. Recent documents, my broker research, what's the transcripts, what are my activities, any highlights that I've made. What I could also do is I can click into any one of my ideas and see how, what's happening. So I can click into Lazy Boy. And very quickly, you'll have any documents, research, thesis activity. And you can see I edited it up oh, January 9th, 2018, September 11th. I'll see a calendar and the earnings release. And I have my entire thesis here. And this is a fully built thesis. I've brought in charts. I've done everything. Now, the really fun part, and what I wanted to do, so we've got our Nike dashboard, and we've started to build our thesis, and we have several notes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right back into my notes, 
and I'm going to search my notes for anything which is Nike. And I can do that from here, just putting in a ticker. Oh, that's not the one that I want. My apologies. And there we go, Nike Inc. And you'll see, I've got several notes. So this is a note that we've just been playing with to just do it, which we added highlights and we have all the charts in. Here is some of the charts that we've built. And I can even say, you know, I only want to find my type note. So up here we go. Just do it. And I'm going to add, actually, I have to add this back. Nike. Enter. And here we go. I've got my thesis. I've got my note. Now what I could do is as soon as I've created a thesis, I have a new area which says sent to thesis. And I could say, you know, I want to add this note into my nice thesis. And there we go. I can add this and say, I'm going to add this to my full case. And you'll see as I did that, there should be a tag that come up and there it is, thesis full case. Adidas strikes out. Here's another note that I wrote looking at how Adidas had talked about it. Very interestingly, one of the heads of Adidas said they'd only sign Kaepernick if you were signed. My take is that will attract athletes to Nike. Nike will stand by you in your time of need. I'm going to put this into my bull case again. And I could also say, oh, I ran some thoughts on Trump. And I could add this to my thesis as well. And let's say this is definitely part of the bear case. If Trump starts to push on athletes and push on Nike, and also maybe you could think of tariffs. And I'll add this to my bear case. And well, we'll see that come in. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to click right back into my dashboard. Click outside of everything so I can get all of my data. And as soon as my night pops up, I'm going to click into my night thesis and I want to make sure I can see all of the content that I've attached to the night thesis. Up oh, here we go. Here's my night. And I'm going to scroll right down. And all of these are widgets, so you can move them around in any way you want. But you'll very quickly see, up oh, here we go. Here's my night thesis. Up, oh, and I have my notes attached. So there's the Adidas strikes out. There's the just do it. There's Nike, what about Trump? Now, once I'm here, let's say, you know, I understand what I'm doing in my portfolio, but there's a colleague of mine who covers the, I guess it's the new section within the uh, SNP code. I think it's called Communication Services now. Um, and I want to think, you know, what are we doing around, you know, what is this, what is my colleague doing? And I can say, yep, I want to search within my team. Up, oh, so I found Nomon. And Nomon covers, I think it was Facebook and Snap. And I might be wrong, but I'm just going to click this. And it's going to pull up Nomon's dashboard. And we can very quickly see, up. Oh, there we go. And maybe actually, I, I thought that we had, uh, he had NVIDIA, NVIDIA. And I could even do a search and say, oh, there's Facebook. And Facebook's actually by Gordon Gecko, but I'll just click into Facebook for a second. And we'll hopefully have the entire note which my teammate has built around Facebook. So this real value add is you have all of your data in one place, all of your team's data in one place, and the ability to search all of that data within one place very easily. You're not going to lose your data. And unfortunately, my computer is having a little bit of slowdown, if anything, today. But with that, I have covered almost everything that I wanted to cover. And the end part that I really wanted to finish with is that we are really, really excited um, to answer any questions. We're really excited to help you and your team enhance both your research process and to save you time. And with that, I am going to say thank you, and I'm going to start checking if there are any questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Nick. And while we're waiting, I um, also want to remind everyone, if you do have a question or a comment for Nick, notice on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll find a control panel with a question title bar. Simply double-click that title bar and then type the question, and Nick will address. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Nick. Thank you, Cynthia. Let's see. I'm trying up. Oh. 
So I think I see a question. I'm going to try and uh, uh, it's very hard for me. Nick, if you click um, the outside of that questions panel, you can expand it. Um, <clears throat> click and drag the edges. Actually, the yes, one that I, that it I, makes it more legible. I am trying to do that, and I can't. Uh, so my apologies. I actually, if there is there any way, Cynthia, that you maybe help me read, I can't actually read the questions. My apologies okay. for that. No problem. Uh, I'll help you read those questions. Let's start. Um, now, <clears throat> there is a question that came in. Does Sentio platform contain a trade engine? And if not, is there a plan to incorporate one at a later date? So that's a great question. Um, at the moment, and I'm guessing by trade engine, we're talking about can you put trades through within Sentio? Um, we don't have that ability. Um, and we are thinking about it, uh, but I, I don't think that that would be within the near-term roadmap. So thank you very much. Nick, if I could jump in, um, as far as with interactive oh, brokers, yeah. we do have Sentio has been integrated into the platform. So once you go through your analysis, um, you'll still have access to be able to uh, create, transmit, and manage your trades through the interactive broker trader workstation platform. Thank you, Cynthia. That's a, a great point. My apologies. Great, great point. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, another question came in. If I have Evernote, can my current notes with Sentio, um, uh, looks like can I use my current notes with Sentio? Although I've heard that Evernote is not really SEC compliant. Is that the case? So I don't want to speak for what Evernote is or isn't. Um, one of the reasons that people love Sentio is, yes, you can set all of your Evernote, OneNote, and you can upload them right into Sentio. Um, and what I'm pulling up on my screen very quickly is I can click into my notebook feature, scroll down, and everyone should be able to see up there's a sync um, with OneNote, Evernote. And so you can upload all your notes into Sentio, and you can also download them right back into Evernote and OneNote. And one of the advantages of Sentio is um, from a compliance perspective, it's very easy to track everything that you've done. So were there to be a, an SEC review, um, if all of the work is within Sentio, it's really easy to track from a compliance officer perspective. Okay, another question. Uh, can I create a reusable thesis template for my team so that I don't have to recreate that thesis structure every time? Absolutely. Um, so when I created that thesis, we have different options. You have the ability to create any structure that you want, save it as a template, have the entire team use it. Um, you also have the ability to organize any of the structured data. So I had shown uh, price target upside, price target downside, conviction, stage, all of these columns that I have on my stream. This is what I've used. Um, you, every user has to ability to pick any column they want, um, but that goes for their entire team. And the idea is to be consistent across the team and be able to run analytics on that. It's, can you find one person who is really good at setting an upside price target, but really bad with the downside? Um, and you can track that over time, right? 24, 36 months. So that the answer is, the big answer is yes, everything is customizable. Cynthia, I don't know if you're on mute or if that was the final question. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on mute for a moment there. Well, a couple more questions here for you, Nick. Um, uh, what is the timeliness of the SEC updates for access on the platform? Great question. I want to say that we upload the SEC filing within milliseconds, and I actually think that it appears and it's viewable to the public exactly at the same time as it is on the SEC website. Um, so we have documents from the SEC instantaneously. Um, I want to say with transcripts, we have both preliminary and final transcripts, and we also have those very, very quickly. Preliminary transcripts immediately after the call, final transcripts a bit later. 
Okay, some more questions for you, Nick. Um, what about privacy and data silos? This is, after all, price-sensitive information and research. Will the Centio staff have access to the data and notes created by users? No. Uh, we have absolutely no access to any of the data uh, created by the users. Um, users also can only share data amongst themselves, and even that can be turned off. Um, we take security very seriously. Um, we followed through with a full iTech DDQ uh, very early on in our founding, and we've already created a second one. So for any security concerns, we really love those questions. We think that we're a best fit for anyone concerned about their security. Uh, do you provide research data and full capability of Centio features for Indian securities, Indian uh, India-based companies, and uh, <clears throat> do you? Yeah, that's a, another great question. So we have global coverage, and we will have coverage of Chinese companies, Indian companies, Pakistani companies, all of the different uh, global public companies. Um, the key aspect is we we have, and we really run everything on English language documents. Thanks, Nick. Um, another question uh, that's come in, uh, what are the charges for individual investors? And what I'm going to do, I'll actually uh, jump in and give you a moment, um, because on the interactive broker platform, you can find out what um, the prices for this research platform are. Underneath our pricing menu, go into research um, data and mar uh, research and market data subscriptions. Because of the way interactive brokers does organize our subscription charges by professional and non-professional traders, you'll find uh, the prices for each are included there. Um, also want to point out that all of our market or our research subscriptions subscriptions do come with a 30-day free trial period. So uh, you can go ahead and give it a try uh, before you actually do subscribe. All of that's included on the pricing menu, um, and you'll have to make those selections through your account management screen. Um, okay, so on to another question here. What should an equity analyst do to keep tabs on what's going on with a company like Nike? That's a really great question. And what I, what I find really powerful is that you have all of the data, all of the Nike data and documents in one place in Tentio. Uh, and I still find that I get overwhelmed, to be very honest. You know, you, could, you can very easily get 10 new pieces of documents or data on Nike every day. And that's just one company. Um, what I really love to do is create alerts. And we can configure a watch list and set alerts to a watch list. But even more powerful is that all of these queries that I ran, like the Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick in transcripts, you can save the query and set an alert to that query. So you'll receive just notification when that query is matched. And I think this is the really the best way to minimize the time that you waste sorting through the thousands and thousands of emails and documents you get. I think that these kind of query alerts are incredibly powerful. Um, another, uh, looks like the last question we have now is, do you have mobile apps? Love that question. We have mobile apps. We think that they're best in class. Um, so we have it, uh, the iPhone, iPad especially, are incredibly powerful. Also with uh, features that allow you to run all of the apps when you're offline. So we are really, really excited about that one as well. And, and, and if that's the final question, Cynthia, I want to make sure I say a very big thank you to you. Uh, you've done a really wonderful job, and we really, really appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Well, thank you, Nick. But I also have um, another comment that just came in. Thank you for all your answers. This comes from one of our participants. Sentia looks like a great platform. Good job, Nick. Um, and that is a great note to end today's presentation. I also want to thank all of you for participating in today's event and remind you that we will be uh, or that we have been recording, and each of you will get a direct link to today's recorded playback soon after the session ends.
Now, if you're listening to this as a recorded session, also I want you to be aware that the webinar notes, the same um, or a representation of the slides that Nick was using for today's event will be included and available to you, either in our follow-up message or directly from the Interactive Broker website. Underneath the Education menu, you'll find a webinars section where you can click through on the recorded webinars and find today's recording as well as the uh, notes that are available as well. So with that, I want to thank you all for participating and um, also mention that we're so we've started to talk about another um, presentation coming up at the end of November. So do watch our website for some additional information. Um, and with that, we want to thank Nick for a nice, fast review. And that came in from one of our um, participants as well. So with that, we're going to conclude our session. You can all exit using the X in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Thanks, all. Have a great rest of your day. And do remember to watch your email later on this afternoon. So <clears throat> thanks, everyone. Have a good one.